And your station may have finally got some good news today. An unmanned supply ship carrying vital parts to repair its damaged solar cells completed a successful docking. And there was particular good news for the British astronaut Michael Fole, a new toothbrush and shaver to replace those he lost in last month's collision. Our Moscow correspondent Julian Mannion reports. It's a manoeuvre the Russians have carried out countless times before, but it was still a moment of real tension. It was while practicing a docking like this two weeks ago that a cargo ship went out of control and slammed into Mir. This time there was no mistake. The Progress cargo ship glided smoothly into the docking port to the evident relief of the scientists at Mission Control. It's a very professional docking. It has been very successful. And we are sure that uh, they will take all the measures to make it successful. For the British-born astronaut Dr. Michael Fole, the docking is especially welcome. For the cargo ship is bringing a toothbrush and toothpaste to replace the items he lost when he had to hurriedly abandon the punctured Spectre module. The Progress is also bringing special equipment for the planned operation to try to restore normal levels of electric power, which were lost when the crew had to sever cables in order to close the airtight door to Spectre and save the rest of the space station. The Russians are rehearsing the planned repair operation in a special swimming pool on the ground. It's provisionally scheduled for the end of next week, but it remains a risky enterprise, which will involve the two Russian cosmonauts wearing spacesuits to reopen the door to the damaged Spectre module, while Dr. Michael Fole waits in the emergency escape module in case anything goes wrong. And the problems that Mir has been experiencing cropped up again today. It's just been announced that the crew will have to delay unloading the Progress cargo ship until later this afternoon. The reason, they won't have enough electric power to do the job until their batteries have had several hours to recharge. Julian Mannion, ITN, Moscow. Even deeper in space, a robot explorer today took its first journey across the surface of Mars. The Sojourner rover, delivered by the Pathfinder space probe, has been carrying out scientific experiments on the red soil. NASA scientists in America say they're absolutely delighted with the mission's progress so far. Here's our science editor, Lawrence McGinty. Mars is there for the taking. NASA have sorted out the glitches that stop the Mars rover driving off the lander and the first mobile exploration of any planet is about to begin. The first rush pictures confirm to a jubilant NASA that the lander is now on the Martian surface. We have basically the perfect site, we have the perfect spacecraft, we have the perfect instruments, and we have the perfect rover, and now we're just more excited than you could possibly to believe to go out there and start to investigate what's there. Really? Already they've seen rounded rocks, which suggest weathering, which suggests water, which suggests life, at least at some time. And there are bands visible on the distant hills, suggesting a succession of floods billions of years ago. This is the first rock the rover will look at in detail. Later today, NASA will be announcing the first scientific results obtained from the rover, if all goes well. And so far, it's gone extremely well. Lawrence McGinty, ITN. And Lawrence joins me in the studio now. Now, Lawrence, I believe we Earthlings with access to a computer can see these pictures. Well, indeed. Uh, NASA have set up a, a whole series of Internet sites like this one uh, all around the world. And you can see these wonderful pictures of Mars. So far, over 100 million people have clocked in to look at these views. And um, what, uh, what else do they get to see? Well, as well as the, the, this kind of uh, view of Mars, lots of the historic moments during this mission are, are also uh, on the Internet. For example, you can see the picture of the lander uh, on the surface of Mars, the first time those six wheels touched the surface of the, of the red planet. That was on the Internet within a matter of moments. Now, what is this little buggy going to do today? Well, it's not actually going to go very far from the lander, but the rocks around the lander um, are, are really interesting. NASA have put together a panorama that shows you what you would see if you were standing on uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 land, the Pathfinder lander. And it's really phenomenal. Uh, all these pictures, the black areas are where they haven't got pictures. Um, you can see various parts of the lander. There's, this was taken uh, over the weekend, so it's before the rover came off. But you can see the variety of rocks there. There are lots and lots of rocks. That's part of the, uh, the tower there was part of the, the, the mass that sends back the pictures. Um, we're going to see an awful lot tonight and tomorrow. We're going to see stuff that might, it won't tell us whether life is there, but it will tell us whether life could have been there. Thanks very much indeed, Lawrence. I must say it looks a bit like my garden. <laughs> 
The government will today unveil new proposals to drive up standards in Britain's schools. They include plans to set tough new targets for all schools and tough new powers to punish those that fail to meet them. The Prime Minister said the reforms showed that the government's commitment to education was not negotiable. Helen Wright reports. The government believes changes have to be made in the very early years of schooling if children are to succeed in the jobs market of the next century. And David Blunkett is expected to set new targets for literacy and numeracy to raise standards in primary schools in his white paper. He also plans a revamp of comprehensive education so that by the time these pupils go on to secondary schools, they'll be taught in sets according to their ability in certain subjects. Mr Blunkett says it's delivering Labour's general election promise to put schools first. Well, we've given them education education, education, both in the budget, both in the first major policy statement of the new government, in terms of the practice we've already engendered from the department itself. The government's also promising smaller classes, better facilities and equipment, and improved teacher training through specialist courses. One of the fundamental problems we've faced in teaching for many years uh, is that the training system has been in the hands uh, of the professors, the theoreticians, uh, and they are a long way from the reality of the classroom, which with all the disruptive youngsters these days uh, is a very difficult job. If teachers fail to make the grade, the white paper gives new powers to change the way they teach or to sack them. Education authorities who fail to support weak schools could also find their powers suspended. Helen Wright, ITN. A wife who gave one of